Alright, so the second part of your chapter of solving team will cut into planar kinetics uh, equations. And here, so here we're going to deal with the symmetry rigid body. So, yeah, since, since we're bringing the symmetry, you always have a plane. Yeah, Without the uh, fixed reference plane, we can be able to understand uh, the uh, symmetry yeah, system. So therefore, you always have to deal with the plane for the symmetric bodies. Okay, and we call that the planar uh, kinetics. So we recall our general plane motion. So that's a combination of your translation and rotation. Yeah. Of course, I will not be asking you how to break down our forces, but you gotta know that we always deal with the coordinate system. Yeah, with its origin at an arbitrary point, uh, which is B here in this case. Okay, we can do uh, anywhere, by the way. So the x y axis. Um, should not rotate but can translate yeah so they can either be fixed or translate with a constant of velocity uh, right now it might confuse you because you can you you feel like it's kind of rotating but isn't yeah because in translation we still have a um, curve yeah Cur curve uh, movement that is going definitely yeah, along the lines so anyway, for now, just uh, try to get like, oh yeah, what's well, anyway, the uh, translation, yeah? And uh, we are studying a body motion in a, in a coordinate system. Every time we think about the coordinate system, we have one, two, and three, yeah? Uh, axis, and so right here we have two axis, x, y, because we are in translation, yeah? Translation motion. And if your body is moving with a translation motion, yeah, now we'll take a look at our equations. So your total force is going to be your mass of that body in times, yeah, your acceleration at g, yeah. So pretty easy. This again is uh, 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 forces, yeah, and these forces, they come from different axes, yeah. But if you get it, that will be okay. Some of the forces, because again, the one force is always you have sub and sub forces you know combined together that's all it's said yeah so the force and of course every time we measure the total or resultant force we always refer to the center of mass you yeah? know which is your g and your force is your mass time acceleration how that mass is moving your yeah, rate so you have your rate of change of velocity rate of change of displacement is going on right in there yeah position displacement is going on right in there so masses uh, times and mass time the acceleration is going to give you your force the total force dealing with you know the force at g and the g come from your excess forces okay so now we break it into since we're studying only two x's in this body we're going to break it down into each one of them so first is a force at x and then force at y axis just give it x and y, right? That's the same equation. It doesn't change. So you add this and this, and you get that. When you get that, you can get mass. You know, if below, uh, if uh, acceleration is given, or if uh, acceleration is not given, you can calculate mass and force. You know, out of it. Okay. Okay. Then we'll get into moment about point B, uh, P. Then we're going to deal with the instant. So instant is moment, right? So since you have an external force, so we every time you have a force, there is an instant, meaning like a moment of that force. Um, you can calculate this way. Don't worry about it. Won't be asking you if you just get the uh, meaning of the moment. Yeah, you know, I'd be very happy. So this is just telling you, yeah, you know, the distance and then the force. Yeah, and then plus, and then you have your moment because your M is your moment, resultant moment for your point P. Yeah, here it's just a point I, yeah, and uh, you can add them up and you can be able to get the resultant moment, yes, at point P. Meaning like the instant changes of your uh, applied external force, we call that moment in that body, okay? So, since we're starting again with the x, y, yeah, forces, um, you have a sum of moment for each force, yeah, and then you can add that, add that up to get the uh, resultant uh, moment. Anyway, so your M is called the kinetic moment about a point in the 
object, which is the rigid body. And the point that we choose yeah, in your body, and if that point is your center, your yeah, mass center G, then we can be able to write the equation like that, yeah, scalar equation. The same thing, the moment is equal to your inertia time, see, uh, angular acceleration. See how this, see that is the sum of the moment is equal to actually your external force, yeah, because our external force T, remember the tall example in the beginning that we study is your inertia and your angular, yes, no, angular uh, acceleration. So if you want to master dynamic, uh, you definitely need to know about how the body moves, all right, and how it stays and how you can be able to change that state of balance by using or applying force. And as soon as you apply the force, it causes a moment. Yeah, moment means instant change because of a force. And that little phenomenon is moment. Whatever that is, it came definitely came from your uh, external force. Okay. Um, it, yes, uh, when you have time, I try to link. So what I do, I usually like link all my equations and then see that which one is related to what and what is related to what and then I'll link it back to the physical stuff, yeah? So your resultant moment, yeah, about G because again, our measure point is your G uh, mass center due to all the external forces is equal to the moment of inertia about G and then times the angular acceleration of that body, okay? So here's the three equation that we can be able to use uh, from your general plane or uh, motion of the rigid body here. Don't worry about it again. Uh, I won't be asking you. Just try to understand like the x, the sum of the forces on x, x is sum of the forces on the y axis is your mass time acceleration. Reference point is g x, yeah? The same thing. Give it a y because we're dealing with the y axis forces, yeah? And then uh, this is a moment. Moment means the instant force because of the external force and we are we are uh, describing that external force in terms of moment because there is an instant yeah of uh, force uh, happened in, at the time before the external force touched the body and you can write it this way which is your inertia times angular acceleration or you can write it this way which is the sum of your uh, each one of them yeah at a point because all of this um your uh this little k is called your radius of gyration right there, okay? So uh, if you uh, and we are dealing with the, any point, but then again, we sum it up all of it to deal with the center point, okay? Center point is like kind of like a reference for the entire body. Every time we uh, get a generalized, yeah, uh, in our shell or whatever type of force, uh, we always measure with the g. But then again, that G is going to have like sub, 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 yeah, moment uh, from uh, different points in the body because your body is composed of so many different particles, yeah? So don't lose that. And every particle has a specific position taken from the reference origin, okay? Which is a G again. So therefore, that G, it comes from the many sub-particles or positions, yeah? And if you pay attention to about that much as you're okay with uh, in this course yeah no need to uh, calculate details okay okay so when your rigid body is going to do only translation all the particles in that body is going to have the same acceleration okay that just uh, simplified of course in real life you know yeah it's they have like a distinct but then we're just going to assume that we have the same acceleration to make it easier. So your acceleration at point G is equal to acceleration A. And the angular acceleration is going to be zero because the body is in translation. Okay, translation. In this case, it's a rectilinear. We don't even consider the uh, uh, curvy. Yeah? Curvy is a different uh, translation type, uh, motion type. At that time, your yeah, X and Y, yeah? Your x and y, the same thing, writing again and again, and then your moment, okay, it's right here at g is zero, moment is zero, and we have the same acceleration when the body is going only with translation, okay, not the general planar, so we don't consider the rotation point. Again, we have other points, we don't have only one single point, g, 
yeah, usually the problems uh, we solve it with G, but then you can also apply that to any point. Yeah, so point A, all you have to do is your MA, your force, all right, times your distance. Okay, again, the distance is measured from a reference, and that reference point here exists in this example is crossing this uh, G point. Okay, but then we still uh, measure the point away from this uh, axis. Well, you have to just multiply that and you will get the moment at that point. So if that point is over here, it's going to be different. If that point is over here, it will be different again, yeah? All right, another way of studying is if your rigid body is in linear, yeah, our coordinate system is going to be different and we call the NT. No need to worry about it if you get like, if we do the linear instead of a regular coordinate system since you're dealing with the curve, yeah, curvatures, we're going to use the NT. That's about it, and we won't be going into it when you actually look at it. It's the same thing, your force, your force at N and T axis, the same thing, force is MA, yeah? This is just what we're putting on where we are studying, that's all, yeah? This is G point, and then here is your N axis and T, yeah, coordinate systems. And then here is your sum of your moments, yeah, of that applied force, of course, yeah? It's got to be zero, and then don't worry anything about this, okay? That just, um breaking down into different you know, parts in that coordinate system so that you can be able to get the uh, right uh, position of uh, the reference that you're referring to here is your g okay your b point is about h distance away from r axis crossing the g point yeah see and then e of course is a uh, is just a constant yeah mathematical or constant procedure for analysis don't worry about it it just telling us how we are going to calculate if we deal with this type of uh, kinetics yeah uh, for the rigid system dealing with your translation only translation we'll do the following yeah uh, either rect is x y and uh, your nt is going to be your curvy yeah uh, to give it the axis in order for us to be able to measure these uh, distances for the particle away yeah from the axis is uh, somewhere in the rigid body your free body diagram, we usually draw it because so uh, that way we can be able to visualize it. If you visualize in your mind, you, you clutter, yeah, your mind clutter and uh, get go into confusion and you won't get it. So it's better to just draw the force diagram so we can be able to see what's going on in there, yeah. And then, of course, identify all the unknown because you have to calculate that one. So that's a, just a regular procedure for how to calculate it. And I won't be, yes, it won't be asking you any of that stuff because we will be doing only the selected problems for your class. Okay, so example one is here and you have a little cart, yeah? And then, of course, so this is where your external force is being applied, 100 Newton, and your uh, weight of this is 100 kilogram, yeah? Which is your mass, uh, weight is mass time, your acceleration due to gravity. And then the center of mass is gonna be right here, at this point, G. Yeah, the forces here already show you, the applied force, P. And then uh, P can be it's just an alphabet, yeah, uh, to identify force. You can put any kind of alphabet here. Now we put a P for that. And then we're going to neglect uh, the mass of that uh, we right there, yeah, to make it uh, simple. So we got to find the normal reaction yeah, at each of the two wheels at A and V because you are, uh, you are supporting this weight yeah and balancing the force if you don't have yeah any force that is balancing this external force this thing is going to fly out yeah uh, so um because uh, you need to uh, balance uh, the position of that uh, card so that it can hold the load inside of it and keep going yeah so let's see uh, how we do that so the very first one we're going to do uh, your free body diagram and we're going to put all of the information that we know, yes. So here, going down, yeah. So 981 is your, uh, Newton is your weight, yeah. And then 100 here, and then you have your normal force, normal force right there at point B and A, which is going to balance that and this, okay, forces. And then, of course, you are pushing it so that it's taking motion, result in motion is going into that direction so we're going to show that one okay and this is the force that is supporting the energy for this thing to go straight okay 
and that is your MA. So the resultant, you know, so we break it down into a uh, coordinate system in X direction because it is going in the X direction. So you put X and then your force is your mass time acceleration because it is going with a velocity changes there. Velocity depends on the position that this thing is taking your displacement, your rate of change of position. So that's what you're seeing right here and your mass is this thing. So uh, force, we're going to calculate it. So 100, yeah. Okay, um, a student get an issue with this 4 by 5 it's always given to you. See, all you have to do is uh, use this one. That's just showing you the direction. The applied force is going in that direction. And uh, you have to give the distance time that in order for us to be able to get it. That's it, your cosine sign. Yeah? So we just uh, uh, don't, you don't have to calculate it. All you have to do is it's going in this direction. All you have to do is just 4 divided by 5. Yeah? Going into that direction, then you're going to have a different 3 uh, yeah? by 5. So like that. Okay. So you have only one this direction or that direction anyway. So uh, all you have to just uh, write down if you don't know how to do the cosine and sine law. Okay. Um, and again, if I ask you, I will be giving you this side. Yeah, I'll give you the whole force for you. So you don't have to worry about this 4 by 5 stuff. And all you have to do is calculate your A, yes, and this divided by that. And you're going to get 0.8 meter per second is the acceleration unit in SI. All right, then we'll get into Y direction. We do the same thing and calculate the Y. And after we get the Y is zero because there is no Y direction we're going. The car is going only yeah, one way, which is your X direction. So that settles, settles that. Yeah, and uh, we'll have to uh, calculate this two, okay, normal force. So normal force is going to balance that. So therefore we add this two up, okay? So normal force is going to be added up together and take the weight out of it and then take the external force out of it and they are balanced together. They're not flying yeah, out. They just go straight, you yeah. know? Uh, taking distance, so therefore it's zero, meaning like it's balanced, nothing is flying out. Put this to the other side, and then you would get an A and B resultant is this much, yeah? So that's uh, how this crate is in balance with the normal forces and other external force, yeah? Of course, I won't be asking you, oh, you just listen, and you just listen, pay attention, so you know, like how they're working, yeah? When we do the problem for this chapter, we'll do only the selected um, problem. Right now, just listen, so you kind of get the idea how things are going, yeah? So use the equation one and two, and we'll solve the uh, all reactions, and you can be able to get N, A and N, B separately, yeah? So why? Because here, we put everything in. This is zero, by the way, yeah? Um, moments right there is zero at the center that's just telling you that moments is always positive yeah B equal to zero we're gonna bring all of it solve this solve this yeah so this equation is uh, uh, not the balance yeah uh, with the force equation here um here we are we're dealing with the uh, moment okay moment uh, so it's a totally different equation. So again, you don't have to worry about it. So in order for us to get an A and an B, we have to write an A in terms of an B, okay, like this, and then put it into here. So an A is equal to 1041 minus an B, and put that yeah, into an A here, and you're going to get the an B, and that's how we calculate an B, yeah? Then you will get the six one ones. So anyways, uh, right here, all we have to understand that the, the forces are in balance, yeah? For um, uh, for this motion to happen, this um, motion to happen, you have only single direction, which is x direction motion, and you have a y direction motion. It's just uh, dealing with the sum of that, yeah, sum of that moments about that g at that uh, in that crate, okay, in that card, sorry. Um, and you put this two scenario and equal to each other. And in that way, you can be able to calculate you know, each quantity out of that two equations. That is all the same, okay? Because the forces balance in this way is equal to 
the forces that is going yeah because in order for this thing to move you have to overcome a moment of inertia in there okay otherwise it won't move so um, that is where you are calculating the external force you know how much force you need to overcome this balance to push that out okay Okay, well, then we'll get into another example of what I just tell you and you just listen so you kind of get the idea of it, you know, when you have time. So we have a, um, this is, I believe, a 100 kilogram table, yeah? They are, like, it is on, there's a truck, you're transporting that table. Very unrealistic, but it's okay, you know, it's maybe a giant table. So 100 kilogram table, the center mass is G, and the coefficient of static friction between the legs of that table and the bed of that truck is going to be this, okay? So here again, I won't be asking you. You just uh, understand, I just put this in so that you're aware of what forces are in there, what kind of you know, stuff you're dealing with when you think about the application outside. So the maximum acceleration of the truck is possible without causing the table yeah, to move relative to the truck. So you can't get this table fly out somewhere and move around right to, yeah, right and left and then move and hit this car, right? We always have to tie it down anyways in real life. So the maximum acceleration of the truck, yeah, uh, we got to find that without causing the table to move relative to, to the truck. But of course, in real life, you can't you can't drive in order to uh, keep the the table right there without tying that up, yeah. And the uh, corresponding normal legs, uh, normal reactions on legs A and B, okay. So maximum acceleration is what we want to find. So let's see how we're gonna do it. So first, we do this on uh, free body diagram, yeah. Connected meaning like uh, this is we call this diagram imbalance, yeah. And this is the resultant movement, your motion, motion going that way, yeah? And then here is everything in balance. So your external force going to go over that, you know? Got to go over that for it to move. Um, so we're going to have our force. And this time you're given a friction, which is this, not the force. Friction is nothing but just resisting the force. So therefore you have to multiply, yeah? with your uh this little uh, normal force right there so that way you would get the friction and the normal force together yeah times and and that got to equal to your um force resultant force in a yeah and then this is resultant force in b at that point yeah your car uh, tire right there And they are in balance, okay? And they are in balance. So your table is not sliding on the truck. Um, if you break this balance, of course, that table is going to slide, you yeah? So right now, the question is asking you, oh, what's the force of before the table slides? So we got to find the balance force. So we start getting in, breaking into X, yeah? And because of that, so the motion is going. Uh, MA for your F, it's just a whole bunch of symbols that make your, make your head you know, eight, yeah? So, and you know, two different points that we're dealing with because that's where your friction force is, yeah, to balance the force, um, going force, and also the weight of it. And we coded the same thing and get that. The second one is your force in your y direction, everything that is in the y direction, this, this, and that, yeah. Everything in the x direction is this, yeah, and that. Um, that's how we uh, calculate. And of course, your mo. Your moment is going to be zero, you know, because we don't want the table to slide. So we're using the same equation here and calculate. And we're going to use the equation two and then equation three to get N and B, plug it into, try to get an A, you know, in terms of uh, and B. So put this on this side, you will get an A, and put uh, this value into here, you know, you will get an B. So that's how we calculate. Again, I will ask you to calculate this. So the maximum acceleration AG can be found from the equation. So we put your maximum, yeah, um, equation one, which is this guy. We know the NA and B, we put it in. 
and you're going to get your a right there. Okay, so that's a 1.96 centimeter per second square. And that is the acceleration that you need, you know, uh, the truck to go without having uh, have that this having had this uh, table moved. Here you have you have a two pound, and that's the weight of that disc so right there, attached to a rod, uh, six pound rod. Yeah, and AB is the rod. And you have a friction less, and so that's cool because you don't have to calculate the friction with your normal force. A uh, collar at B right there. So if the disc is going to roll without slipping, okay, so like the uh, correct uh, FP uh, free uh, body diagram, yeah. So uh, first thing we got to know is there's only one single point, so one normal. So when you look at it, everything is the same right there, so that's correct, yeah. And then second thing we have to uh, find is this point, okay? So that is going to be the normal force going that direction at B point. So we got it, so everything is the same, so that we can't eliminate any of it. The third thing we have to find a six pound rod, okay? So there is a six pound rod. So B is eliminated because you have eight pound here. So we have only six pound rod, see? And the last thing we have to find is a two pound disc, which is this one, a two pound disc and six pound rod is fine. So the next thing we gotta find is your uh, friction, yeah? It's friction is set zero, so there is no friction. And the last thing we gotta find is your force, yeah? So the force, the rolling is going to be, which direction is it gonna go, yeah? So in between, we already eliminate B because of eight pound, yeah? We have this and this, yeah? So we check the weight of the rod and the weight of the disc, we got it, you know? Everything else is fine. So the only two differences right here, one difference is here going in that direction, and the other one is going to this direction. Which direction will it go? So that's what you have to think about it. So um, we're here, the key point is without slipping, okay? There won't be any kind of slip. So if this ball is going to that direction, you know, it will slip because you have seen this, this resultant force is going to that. So if we have to have a, we have to apply the force that is going to compensate this, okay? Because this is being compensated by the normal force. So uh, if you put this uh, force to that direction, you're going to be strengthened that slip, yeah? So therefore, we are going to resist the, this uh, force right there because when you look at it, this is supporting this and this right there, yeah? About eight, eight here, uh, you're going to have. Uh, so, so therefore, uh, in order for this thing to stay without slipping, yeah, on this wheel, you have to have an external force applied to compensate that normal force of B, yeah? So that's what the answer is C. Okay, the next one is with slipping. This is the same thing, so we check the same thing, so you get rid of that one, so we're left with this one. In order for this to slip, of course, um, you're, gonna sl uh, you're gonna choose the other one, yeah? So this is without slipping. And this is, this is without slipping, and then this is slipping, okay? All right, this is another uh, problem right here. Again, you have your 300 Newton force, okay? A P pulling this way. Remember all your forces are vector, so you have a specific uh, direction. Then you have your 60 kilogram cart. The mass center is right here, yeah, and you're looking for the normal reactions at both the wheels A and B right there, yeah. This is where your balance points are, of course, all dimensions are given there for you. So let's see how we uh, handle this one. So free body diagram, and you have your kind of Dega diagram, the balance, and also this is going in this direction for your motion. They are equal, otherwise uh, it won't go, yeah. So we're going to apply the equation, your force, you know, x direction going this way, showing, yeah. And of course, don't worry about this. This is just showing you the angle. I will give you the whole thing, yeah. And you, you know, of course, I'll give you the entire force. So you don't have to worry about it. So uh, now you get uh, 60 times uh, acceleration. So you get acceleration. This divided by 60 and you will get that. The next one is your y component. We do the same thing. Yeah, y 
will have our normal forces up and your weight down yeah put each one of them and then of course um the one component of this force yes and you'll get this and the next one is your the sum of your moments so we are going to put yeah uh, that all together for your normal force And since we're dealing with the uh, moment, you have a distance yeah, away from the reference point, so don't forget about that. But don't worry about it. I will not ask you. Yeah, uh, This is just for you to know. So this is just a distance that you are seeing that you will have to calculate from this uh, center, yeah? um, center axis. And that's where the distance is coming from. And use this N and put it back in there. And you're going to get the, the uh, an A and ND. Yeah? So that's how we uh, calculate. Because the reactions are happening right here on the X axis at point A and B on these wheels. Yeah? So that's where your balance of forces. So that uh, the resultant uh, force can go to that direction. All right, then we get into the, uh, this is just a review for you. So here is your linkage. It's going to rotate, yeah, rotate like that. So you have your box A on top of it. So this box A, if this example, all of the forces are happening about 1.5 meter away from here to the base. And this one is your rate of change of velocity, yeah, angular velocity right there. So this kind of uh, this kind of motion, it's not rotation because there is an exit. So therefore, the only curve, the other one is your curvy, yeah, curvy linear. So when you look at it, there's only one. So curvy linear, definitely not linear because it isn't. There's a curve, yeah. This is not a rotation, so that one gets rid of that. You're not doing the general plane motion because there's no rotation. So it's a wrong, wrong, wrong right there. Bang, 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 yeah. Uh, that's how you uh, choose in your multiple choice. First, you know this is a rotation, so this and this automatically gone. You have this and this. This is not linear because you have an angle. Yeah. All right. Uh, so we get into next one. So how many independent scalar equations of motion can be applied to the box A? So we gotta find the uh, uh, equations. You know how many can you apply? So uh, first you have the weight and then you have the normal. So that's already two already. And then the force, yeah, resultant force coming out from that two. So altogether uh, three, yeah. Okay, then we'll get into the rotation about a fixed axis, your wheel again. So first of all, we're going to analyze the planar kinetics of your rigid body undergoing a rotational motion. So chapter 60 and 70 are very closely related to each other, yeah. This is just uh, this uh, plan. Okay, so uh, this come from after you read your after you read your uh, textbook, and uh, you can try that. But I'll do this for you. So in rotation, uh, because some of you uh, didn't read the textbook. So anyway, so in rotational uh, motion, the normal component of acceleration at the body center again G. We always yeah we always measure at G anyway G or. Uh, parallel to G. Yeah? So anyway, so G is always is going to be so this one is talking about hey in the rotational motion we have a G in a body and that place is going to have a normal you know, acceleration and that normal acceleration is always so what's going on so think about it as a zero there is acceleration yeah so the normal component of acceleration cannot be zero because it is in a rotational motion so that's out tangent to the path of the motion of G. Uh, it cannot be tangent to the path of the motion of G because it is a rotation. Yeah? Um, so you can, uh, you, because you have all the, the uh, points in, in your rigid body, I tell you so many times again. Yeah? So it can be tangent. Uh, directed from G towards the center of the rotation, that is correct because you have many other points, right, that you can uh, change the distances away from the measuring axis. So your acceleration got to be directed yeah, from the G towards the center of uh, rotation. Okay. 
Of course, so here we have a crank and all that white pump again. So here the pin is right there. Uh, the crank is right here. Yeah, and we have a driving torque, which is your external force. And yeah, from the motor. So when the crank is going to turn, the dynamic reaction is going to produce at that pin. And the reaction is a function of the angular velocity, your angular uh, acceleration and orientation of that crank. Yeah. So how this uh, this machine is uh, taking a, a position in the space. Yeah. So if the motor is going to exert a constant torque, your external force on the crank, we got to think about if that crank is going to turn at a constant angular velocity or not. Yeah. So that's what we will study in the sections. So if it's desirable uh, for such a machine. Um, it's all about all about work right here, yeah. And we put the parts together so you can use uh, the translated energy to do something, yeah. The setups are like it's pretty much a transfer in the energy, yeah. Okay, the second one is a pendulum, and here is a pendulum. Uh, in this machine, of course, it's going to release from the rest. And uh, your angle right there. This is just a little angle showing you like how much yeah movement is done in this rotation. Uh, it's in degree of course because of the way that the rotation is always a circular yeah uh, movement. So it's angular velocity, uh, which is your little uh, here yeah a uh, little oh, yes uh, this. Okay, so your uh, omega yeah uh, I don't see the point. Okay, so just uh. So angular velocity omega, yeah, is going to begin to increase in that setup. So we got to think about, oh, can we determine the angular velocity when it is in a vertical position on which property, yeah, um, on which property of that pendulum, yeah, uh, does the angular acceleration is going to depend. So these are the things that we need to think about in this setup for rotational motion, yeah, that we will study in this uh, chapter. So what is the relationship between uh, your property and then or in your angular acceleration? Okay. And this one just listen, yeah, you know, how we rotate about an fixed axis. Um and the same thing, it's just a little bit kind of difficult to <laughs> Because it's kind of like a complicated diagram for you, but it's pretty, you know, like when you actually look at it, there's nothing. So that's your G right there, yeah? And then you're going to move a circular path and your radius is right there. Yeah, since we're measuring from the G, we give it a G right here, yeah? So I think your your problem is a symbol, yeah? Your brain is not picking up the symbols and you know, relating the symbols to what they are, I guess. Well, that, that would take some time, yeah? So therefore you will read, yes, read again and again so you will get it. So the acceleration of point uh, G, yeah, the acceleration of point G, uh, you can, um, it's going to be, when you look at this little arc right there, see, because the center is right here, so you have a circle there, even though we don't draw the whole thing, you know that there is a circumference of the circle is right, right there. So here is a component, yeah, and this is the acceleration of the point G, coming out from G, okay? Um, we can break this down into two components, like you uh, read it in your uh, quiz, okay? So this one, it, because it's a vector, so you can always break that vector down into its components, okay? So when you break it down, then you will have this one and then that one to get this, yes? So that's what's uh, asking you in your previous uh, quiz. So anyways, the acceleration of point G is right there, tangential to the circumference of this circle, which origin is O, yeah? So that's what it say right here, yeah? And then you also have normal component, which is in your quiz, the other part of your acceleration is this one, okay? It's your RG and then your um, angular velocity square. Tangential component is your... Um, Rg times your angular yeah? acceleration, which is this guy right there. See? Acceleration, acceleration, acceleration first component, and we have a second component called the normal. So you already have the three acceleration at the same time. <laughs> yeah. uh, be careful. So anyway, so if you get conceptually, I'll be okay. Yeah? Then you know that the bang, bang, and another one right in there, which is this guy. You can't see it because of the arrows that overlapped.
of course, and uh, how we're going to calculate that. So since the body experiences an angular acceleration, your inertia is going to resist, yeah, create a moment of uh, magnitude, uh, which is this guy. So your inertia is going to be inertia at the g and then times your angular uh, accelerations, yeah. So your scalar, scalar mean we're dealing with the magnitude of that equation of the motion is going to be this. First is your force. Second is your force. We are in NT coordinates because we're dealing with the rotation. Since that is a force, you have mass and acceleration. And we give all our symbols right there because we measure away from the G. We are in an axis, which is your NT coordinates because we're dealing with the rotation, yeah? So it's pretty easy, but actually, it's just a, a different way of writing it. Your mass, and then we're gonna write this acceleration in R because you measure with that distance. And then of course, we're gonna give this, yeah? Is that angular component normal? Or the tension tangential component, which is your angular acceleration right there. Of course, your moment is equal to your external force, you know, because of this force, your moment's been born out of that force as they act on that object. So it's equal as balance. And then we'll get into a moment, moment equation, which we usually have the sum of the moments, yeah, coming out from your MMI, which is your mom, uh, mass moment, yeah and of course your different components yeah uh your acceleration components right there that we uh i'll put that in which is from here yeah um, right there so put that all in right now you can't be able to see it do not worry about it i will not ask you you only have to listen to this one time okay if you get like a conceptually it's okay then we bring our parallel axis theorem and go point to point. So every time you bring that parallel axis theorem, we're measuring from an axis. Yeah, so we bring in the axis again. We're in the NT coordinates because we're in the rotation. Yeah, so therefore we do our forces like this. And then your forces depends on what type of acceleration you have, normal or tangent. And then your moments of, yeah, uh, your moments, it's equal to your external force, which is your... Um, moment's mass you know, of inertia okay so which is this one okay um procedure for analysis for this part you don't need it i just uh, reiterating the same shit yeah which is your acceleration yeah and t and acceleration um uh, for your t uh, axis and then your n axis and i'm going to keep going free body diagram and then we're going to have the mass moment of inertia your three equations of motions, and then we're going to use a kinetics, yeah? And then we will continue uh, continue uh, with this example one for that. Okay, so here is the rod. Uh, your mass of that rod is 20, and it is rotating this way, yeah? So since we're rotating, we're dealing with the radiant stuff. Radiant is just for the rotation, and this is your uh, angular velocity right there. From O all the way to the end of the rod is 3 meter away. So these are your reference distances, yeah? Of course, your moment is a 60 newton meter is applied to the rod. Because without that, it's not going to move, yeah? Call it a moment. Moment is nothing but it's just your external force. But that force is taking some distance, yeah? And at that instant, you get the moment. Yeah, so that's what they're uh, talking about here. Bang. Because of the external force, is this thing, the system of things is moving uh, over this uh, distance. Yeah, that's what's talking about the moment. So we we're concentrating on external force and uh, and an uh, assembly of a system, which is different parts in that system, which is this guy here, rod, and then of course with this little thing where the origin is. And we have to find the angular acceleration. Yeah. And then the reaction at the pin O, which is this guy pinning me, like attaching this rod to here, yeah, support. And uh, when that rod is in horizontal position, because when it rotates, it, it's going to have like a, your clock handle, yeah, it's going to go that way. So 
And first, we know the mass center of, yeah, my center moves a circle. And the radius is going to be like a 1.5 meter acceleration is your normal, yeah, component. And then you also have a tangential component because each acceleration can be subdivided into two components like that, yeah, depends on the direction of it. And um, that's a, a perpendicular to your RG, yeah, apply that problem uh, procedure from the uh, uh, lecture. So anyway, just look at this, yeah, this is your free body diagram, this is how the forces are balanced. Kinetic means it is in motion, you know, free body is about to be in motion, but uh, in free body diagram, we're usually showing the balance of it, yeah, so so we can be able to understand uh, the uh, coordinate, yeah, axis and, and forces in that axis, yeah, so that way we can break it down, you know, calculate each one of them and then combine it again, yeah. So that's the way we usually deal with in dynamic yeah, problem solving. So we break it down again for N and T. We get M A, yeah. We're doing the same thing. And then your A is different A, yeah. You have tangent and normal. If you get about that much, it's okay. Yeah. Um and then we do the same thing, moment. Use our moment equation, put that in, calculate it, yeah. And uh, we get our uh, acceleration, and then we're gonna get our uh, point O, okay. The force at the point O is going to be 19 Newton, yeah. Of course, right now you can't be able to see it because we're just uh, putting a uh, value back into the equation, okay, back into the moment, a sum of moment equation at the point O. Um, and you're dealing with the, yeah. Um, your mass and then your distance and your acceleration in the setup. All right, the next example is uh, we have a rod right there, okay? And that rod is about 15 kilogram, yeah? And the mass center is a point uh, G, okay? So that just uh, get the mass of the mass center of that uh, rod. That's your physics, but I'll be giving you where the center is if I ask you. So the reaction of the pin O and the angular uh, acceleration of the rod just after the cold is cut. So here we're going to cut this. So when you cut this, this balance is going to become unbalanced, yeah? Because you are getting rid of the support force right there, yeah? So since support force is gone, this will move, yeah? Because of this uh, axis right there, yeah? The point, pin point is right here, so of course it will, it will move. And we got to find, oh, what is the reaction of this O when you cut this thing, yeah? And what's the angular acceleration? Because this unbalanced yeah, force is the external force for this yeah, setup. And it will apply that force. That force is going to transfer in distance, of course, yeah, in movement. And then transfer that energy to this energy, change it in kinetic energy, and it will start to move. When it moves, we want to know the acceleration. Yeah, because there is a disturbance in your velocity over time. And we want it. It is an angular because you have, look at this, there is there is a pin. Yeah, there is a, look at this, you know, the setup is, would definitely support the rotation instead of a different motion, yeah? Of course, you also have like a, a curvilinear, yeah, another one, another motion, curvilinear translation. is also, we will take a look at it, you know, which way to go. So right now, we're in the fixed rotation, so... Uh, you don't have to think about it, but if you if you are like just uh, solving the problem outside, you still need to think about every time you deal with yeah you know, a rotation or angular yeah you know, um, motion. Uh, you have to think uh, try to think is it called be linear or is it going to be a uh, rotation? Is it a pure rotation or is it a rotation around a fixed point? Yeah, you know? right now we have a fixed point. Okay, and then we get back and draw our diagram balance and here we and the forces go and we'll get our nt axis because we are in rotation so instead of x y we do nt plug it in plug it in and get acceleration and use a moment equation the same thing again and again and then solve it out yeah and you will uh, get you will get the final one is asking you the uh, uh force right at this uh, point oh and um, you'll get it, okay? 
So all it's the same equation used again and again repeatedly. Yeah. And find the force applied at that center, sometimes G, sometimes O, sometimes A, with the distance away from the axis. That's about it, actually. Yeah. <laughs> it's not that hard. It is a uh, uh, people are freaking out because of all the symbols, yeah, you know, uh, incredible amount of symbols. That's why we're writing the equation so you get familiar to these symbols. All right, so let's we'll do a little quiz right here. I'll do it for you. you know? So if the a rigid bar is right there, and then your of course your support right here, your pin is right here at A, and that thing is released, yeah, you know, from the rest, uh, from horizontal position. I'll let it go. So it's gonna go that way, yeah. So your theta is, of course, a horizontal position zero, and then theta is going to start taking, increasing, you know, as this handle moves, the, this bar is going to move. So we got to find the angular acceleration, yeah? And so you have to know, like, uh, what is it going to be, yes? So first is zero, then we let it go, the rod is going to go, blah, 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 and the bar is going to go down all the way there. Yeah, so the angle is going to be from 0 all the way to 180, of course. It will not definitely stop at 90 and, and, and stay there. Yeah, it will just go from horizontal 0 position, bang, to 180 degrees. So therefore, D is fine. Yeah? D is uh, because this one doesn't include 90 or 0. This one doesn't include 0 or 180. This one doesn't include 90 or 180. Yes? So this one is 0 or go all the way to 180 because it doesn't define the amount of force it's only said maximum yeah so maximum got to go all the way up to 180. all right um this is related to the other problem so it says uh, when uh, you got uh, let me uh, put this i will copy it and put it here so you still have your diagram right there so uh we're gonna do uh think about the situation where your theta is 90 right here you know the horizontal component uh of the reaction at pin zero uh, where is my pin zero i think they're getting the pin uh, wrong so it's got to be right here yeah so anyway so when it goes straight down to 90 yes so at that time uh at that time it's asking you what's the horizontal component of that reaction okay it's got to be uh it, it won't be anything yeah because it's just straight down so you have two components one is uh horizontal and the other one is uh, a vertical right now we want the horizontal component of a uh, the reaction at that pin yes so that's what it's going to be i'm going to get rid of this thing because this is not the correct way i don't know why it's here yeah at the pins so are right here yeah it's got to be zero because it goes straight down, yeah? So that would be like uh, completely uh, compensated by your your lip, lifting yeah, of force right there. All right, um, again, uh, you won't get it right now for the very first, all right? Uh, looking at it, you have to read the chapter, listen to the lecture. Go back to your uh, textbook and read also the supplement uh, material that I provided for you in your review. Then you will get it. Okay, I'm talking about again, don't read so fast like I do because I have to save time because uh, lectures are always very long, yeah, for uh, dynamics. It's very normal. So, anyways, it like this. Yeah. So, most of the uh, one semester course, uh, many of the professor will give you only one section out of uh, <laughs> each chapter. I'm trying to cover it a little more for you, so that way, uh, those of you who uh, want to go, yeah, to RIT, you will have uh, some foundation on that, yeah? So anyway, so, uh, horizontal is right here, yeah? Horizontal component. You can break it into vertical component and horizontal component, so that's what we're talking about. So don't get into the resultant thing, yeah? If you get into the resultant thing, you will be choosing that. So anyways, so 